So now we're given question six. This is an initial value problem with this initial condition. But this time around, what you observe is the forcing function here is actually a spliced function. So our aim is we want to have a solution which is not just any solution but a continuous uh, a continuous function should be our solution. Now the thing is how then do we achieve such? I'm going to explain everything in details. So the first thing is in trying to solve this differential equation since f of x has been spliced for two range of values of x so I'm going to consider each of them in solving this differential equation. So now in considering the first one which is for, for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1 my f of x is 1 for this range so f of x equals 1 so since f of x equals 1 let me put it back here and solve this differential equation so you have dy dx plus y equals 1 so now here uh, my equation of y here is, is 1 so that implies that my integrating factor integrating factor is going to be e to the power the integral of 1 dx and what we have is e to the power x so the next step is multiply both sides by the integrating factor so we have e to the power x dy dx plus e to the power x y equals e to the power x now this, applying the product rule, we could write this in a composite form as d dx of e to the power x y equals e to the power x. Now the next thing is we integrate both sides with respect to x. So integrating both sides, we have d dx equals e to the power x y dx equals the integral of e to the power x dx. So you're finding the integral of a derivative with respect to x. You're still going to get the same thing. And then with respect to x, we integrate this. So what we have where you get this, we still get the same thing, which is e to the power x. y equals when you integrate this, you have e to the power x. And then plus arbitrary constant. So to find y, we divide both sides by e to the power x. So when you divide this by this, you have 1 plus c e to the power negative x. Now, there is something you need to note. The initial condition we are given here says when x equals 0, y equals 1. So this is for when x is 0. Now for the two range of values of x we are given, this one is for when x is greater than 1, but this one is when x is between 0 and 1. 0 inclusive. So here x equals 0 in this range here x plus 0 belongs to this range but it does not belong to this range so that implies that the initial condition we are given can only be used for this range and for this value of f of x so in other words you cannot use this initial condition to find a particular solution for this range of values of x so how then do we do it anyway let me start by implementing this initial condition in the general solution i obtained for solving this initial value problem so we have when x equals 0, y equals 1. So you have y equals 1, 1 equals 1 plus c e to the power 0, which is 1. So this one implies that my c equals 0. So if c equals 0, because this is a, a general solution. So when c equals 0, then this whole thing goes to 0. And then I have my particular solution to be y equals y equals 1. So y equals 1 for, for this range here now, for, for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1. That is, that is the particular solution for, for this range of values of x. So now the next thing we are going to do is to find the general solution for this new range. So in continuation now, we are considering when x is greater than 1. So for x... For x greater than 1, our f of x now would be negative 1. So we have f of x equals negative 1. And then when we solve this, we have dy, dy dx plus y equals negative 1. So similarly, the coefficient here is 1, so which implies that the integrating factor will be e to the power 1 dx 
and that is e to the power x. Then we multiply both sides of this differential equation by the integrating factor, which is e to the power x. So we have e to the power x dy dx plus e to the power x y equals negative this time around e to the power x. And then writing this in a composite form, so we have d dx of e to the power x times y equals negative e to the power x then we integrate both sides I'm just going through the whole thing again to freshen up our memory and then to make all the things we've done to stick better so we're integrating this so we're still going to have e to the power x y equals negative e to the power x plus arbitrary constant and then from here making y the subject of this equation here you have y equals negative 1 plus c e to the power negative x so now this is what we have as the general solution now what you observe is since we cannot use this in we can't use this initial condition in this place here now you recall from the last part that we said for for um, 0 for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1 we had our y to be 1 we had y to be 1 and now for x greater than 1 we've gotten our y to be negative 1 plus c e to the power negative x now how then do I clear this c so like I told you initially any solution which you prefer for as a solution of the differential equation must actually be a continuous function now there is going to be a break now the break is at this point here, at the point x equals 1 is where the function has been splitted. Is where it has been splitted. So for this function here to be a continuous function, it has to be continuous at the point x equals 1. That is y must, must be continuous. Must be continuous at x equals 1. So y must be continuous at x equals 1. So what does it mean for y to be continuous at x equals 1? It simply implies that the limit as x tends to 1 of y of x must actually equal y of 1. That is the, the function value at that point x. Now from here, 1 belongs to this range here because it says less than or equal to 1. So that means y of 1 is 1. And then our y of x is this. So I've been able to find, okay, let me just write the limit. So my y of x, which is actually what I have here, that's minus 1 plus c e to the power negative x. So according to the continuity, the limit as x tends to 1 of this thing must be 1. So the limit as x tends to 1, we just simply substitute wherever we have x. We substitute it with 1. So this is the only place we have. We have x here. So we have minus 1 plus c e to the power negative 1. They said it must be 1. So we make c the subject of this equation here. So negative 1 comes to this side. So we have c equals, this is going to be 2. Then 2, I'll be 2e. So my c is, my c is 2e. So having gotten having gotten that for my for my c, so now having known that c equals to e, simply implies that for y to be continuous, the arbitrary function here must be two e, must be two e. So hence the solution of this differential equation here, based on what we are given, is going to be y equals. So for zero for x for x in this range zero less than x less than one. Our y is going to be 1, which we know that. Now, for x greater than 1, we now have a new value, which is going to be minus 1 plus 2e, 2e into e to the power negative x. So, if you write your answer like this, it's still fine, but you want to go further and you write this as 2e to the power 1 negative x. Yeah, they are all still fine, but this is going to be your particular solution for that or for the differential uh, equation and then the initial condition.